Hey guys, welcome back to All Things Knives. It's your host Fletcher, and today we are doing the Para 3 Lightweight versus the Bug Out. So without further ado, let's get into it. Up first, we have the Benchmade Bug Out. This is a lightweight EDC knife designed by Benchmade. The standard model comes with FRN handles. You get titanium liners and lock. I believe that is the material they are using now. And S30V, this is an S90V. On the standard model, it is blue FRN and a stonewashed blade. Next, you have the Para 3 Lightweight from Spyderco, also made in the USA in Golden, Colorado. Theirs come with a CTS BD1N blade steel for their standard model, black FRN. You can get a stonewash blade or actually they might classify it as a satin or a DLC blade. Both do have some partially steel or metal construction to hold their lock. The Spyderco is using the compression lock like on their standard pair of three and the ben Benchmade's using their axis lock. The pocket clips for both are I believe steel construction. Benchmade, Benchmade does a steel clip that is deep carry. Spyderco also does a deep carry clip but they do a wire fashion which a lot of people actually seem to love. Just takes one screw instead of two, and I believe it's a T8. Both have slots to take paracord, which is a plus in my book. Sometimes it's nice to not put the clip on. You can do a bright color for the paracord so that if you ever set it down, it pops to your eyes like so. The Spyderco Para 3 with its CTS BD1N steel I believe comes in at around 130. I would think last time I looked, it was like 124, 126. So not bad for USA made knife. And the bug out comes in at 180. So in terms of cost, it's gonna have to go to the pair three just because it is cheaper. But in terms of value, if you actually look at another variant of the Spyderco Para 3 Lightweight, you can get the Spy 27, which is, think of it as an easier to sharpen S35VN. It drops very well, takes an edge very well. That one, I believe, is 154, 150-ish, which is still $30 cheaper for similar, similarly performing steel like the S30V. So I would still say value still goes to Spyderco in terms of the Para 3 Lightweight. In terms of the different steels you can get on the Lightweights, you can get a lot of different steels through Spyderco. Like for example, this one is a Crewware, which I actually blade swapped because the Para 3 blades will blade swap into the Para 3 Lightweight, meaning you could technically have a Maximate Para 3 Lightweight. Kind of expensive to do, but if that's what you want and your heart wants it, go for it. So in terms of steel options, I would still give it to Spyderco, not to hit on Benchmade at all, but for the bug out, you tend to have to change handle materials as well or go into their custom builder. You can get S90V, I believe you can get 20CV right now, and then there's their standard S30V. So not as many options and you do have to pay more. So in terms of value, the lightweight still kind of wins there. In terms of availability, the Benchmade bug out is going to win because you can go into any basically brand name sporting goods store, higher end, that has a higher end knife section. Uh, I believe REI carries the bug out, Sportsman's Warehouse carries the bug out, Benchmade and Cabela's carry the bug out. I've never been into a Shields, but I'm sure the Shields also carries the Benchmade bug out, which I think they are a Benchmade dealer. So if you're a Benchmade dealer, you sell the bug out. It's just one of their best selling models. Any of the online stores will have the Para 3 Lightweight, but Spyderco 
sales, at least in person at the larger stores, I haven't seen as many of the pair three lightweights. So, but everywhere I've gone to that's a Benchmade dealer has the bug out. So in terms of availability, most likely gonna be able to find the bug out a little bit more. So when goes to the bug out on that one, let's talk about the clips a little more. We did talk about their construction. The clip on the pair three can get a little loose like that. It normally just means you need to tighten it down. Uh, it does actually hold pretty decently though. So you see there, you do get a good amount of snap. And because it's a wire clip, it actually, I feel like it doesn't affect the hot spot as much as say something like with the standard para three. So it is still a good pocket clip. With the bug out, depending on the size of your hands, this will cause a hot spot right there on the palm. So I will say in terms of the placement of the pocket clip, let me feel it one more time. I think I am gonna have to give it to the pair of three lightweight on that one because you can also choke up into the choil and then the pocket clip doesn't come as much of a become as much of a factor. I will say for stock pocket clip though, like it's retention, I, I like the bench made more over the pair of three. So in terms of the clip itself, I'd give it to the bug out, but in terms of how it affects ergonomics, it's gonna go to the spider co. Now let's talk overall handle ergonomics, not just with the pocket clip. The Benchmade has a very neutral handle shape, but you do have some space in between, maybe about a half inch there. So it doesn't really affect how you can use the knife. I've used my bug out plenty of times. But what's nice about the pair of three is you do have that choil, which puts you right on that cutting edge. So when you need to cut and make controlled cuts, you can with the pair of three. What's nice too is if you need to make a really forceful cut, they have that hump on there. So you can really bear down into your cut. This is kind of a hard one because I really love both of the ergonomics on these set of knives. The more neutral handle on the bug out, you guys can probably hear I'm, I'm struggling with this one a little bit. Only because of the larger hot spot to the clip will I give it to the pair of three and the choil. I have had plenty of tasks where I need that extra control up here and even on the tip and that choil kind of helps give that to you. And that's, that's where the choil really, really plays a role. So I will give the handle to the pair of three, even though this really nice neutral blade, shape, uh, sorry, it does have a neutral blade shape, but the neutral handle shape is very nice to have. So I will give it to the Parrot 3 just because you can get some more leverage and control out of it, which I think with a knife does matter a lot. Next, let's go on to the blade shapes. So as you see, this is kind of your PM2 style of blade shape, drop point, clip point, I almost clip point-esque, but it's, it drops. So I'll, I'll call it a drop point for purposes of this video. This is also a drop point. This one has a basically a continuous belly. You have a bit of a flat here and then it does curve, which is nice for draw cutting. This very neutral blade shape from Benchmade actually does lend itself to a good amount of uses. Standard drop point does maintain the thickness on the tip a little more. I will say having the slightly longer blade does help out a lot more and more so like in terms of food prep you're cutting a lime or something like that anything like that the longer blade shape is going to be more appreciated the geometry of the bug out is actually pretty decent and i do tend to really like the blade shape like it's just a super generic blade shape i think on this one i will give it to the bug out in terms of blade shape just because of the longer shape and the overall more general profile this does actually make a really good hunting knife as well now my thoughts on the spider co being because i did give it to the benchmade 
really my main reason being is yes this is full flat ground on the standard one but this part right here is really thick but I have come into times with the para three where if I'm doing anything kind of food prep wise I just run out of blade length which just makes anything like that a little harder so I just tend to not like it as much I do like that there's you know, the choil doesn't get caught up on anything, but this still can right here. If you hit that, it can get caught. Like in, in terms of if you just go through your cut or you go in a little far, you can catch here. And... I will say as well, this because this is thicker out here, you know, the, the full flat is nice versus something like this, but just because it's thicker out there, if you cut anything like cardboard, sometimes it can bind in this area or the hole. Uh, just just if an odd piece kind of goes in there so I will I will say caveat there both great blade shapes both cut very well both really great geometry it's really a slim margin to the bug out on the blade shape in terms of weight the bug out is lighter so if you are looking for a lighter weight EDC go for the bug out over the pair three if you are someone who's worried about Omega Springs, well, this does not have an Omega Spring on it. Compression lock is, I'd kind of view it as an advancement upon the liner lock because you have more points of contact in the lock. You have this pin here, you have it on the blade, you have the lock interfacing the pin, but also the blade interfacing the pin. So it's a very good system, very long wearing because it's like a, a liner lock, but backwards with more points of contact. Whereas, it's, so that's really hard to make that system fail unless something happens in here, or you basically have to break the blade in order to break the system. There's no Omega Springs that can break or anything like that. So because of that one quirk with the bug out, I will give the locking system that the knife uses to the Spyderco. Now, it does come with the fact that it's not super ambidextrous, but 90% of people on earth are right-handed. Whereas this, yes, it is ambidextrous, but the fact that your log could fail at any time from a broken Omega spring, huge crutch. So I will give the locking system to the pair three. Now as to disassembly, taking apart a pair three lightweight is so much easier than a bug out. Anytime you do anything with an access lock, it is a pain in the butt to get back together. I just, in terms of maintenance, the, I will go for the pair of three every day, and I can blade swap. The only thing that's somewhat harder on the pair of three is finding a stone in a guided system that can get all the way to the edge. That's really the that's the one quirk in the blade design with the pair of three, in my opinion. Uh, with the bug out, because you do have the choil, it is a lot easier to sharpen. So, and it's just a standard draw point, so it's not really it's not rocket science either, right? When it comes to sharpening them. And another thing to talk about is out of the box, these relatively behind the edge have the same geometry. The bug out does use a thinner blade stock. And so in terms of just overall being slice here, I think really the only improvement could probably be if it was just full flat, but I get why they keep this out here. It's to keep strength in the blade. So Spyderco just does a distal taper. And so it's, thin out here, thickens out here, but it is all the way down, which in some material is better to have versus that saber, spot, saber grind where you have that flat there. Now, in terms of which would I take over the other, this is a very hard question for me, just because I do love the Para 3, and by extension, the Para 3 Lightweight. In my, in my honest opinion, I would probably take the bug out. My only reason being is I'm kind of viewing this from a, a stock knife example, right? Now, what the two examples I have are not stock knives, but if I'm just looking at the stock knives, I yes, I am paying more out of pocket for the Benchmade. They do have a great warranty, though. So does Spyderco. Spyderco has a decent warranty, but Benchmade, I could send this in right now. They 
could, they would probably clean the knife for me, take it apart, completely service it. I would tell them not to sharpen it just because I don't need their edges on here. But they would completely take care of this knife for free for me. All I'd have to do is pay shipping there. They'd repair anything that needs repaired, including the Omega Springs, if that's of, uh, of concern. Tune it up, all that. Oil it up, send it back to me. But my main reason being is I have used this knife out in the field a lot. And I just know it works really well. It's a great fishing knife. The internals are titanium versus steel. I can get some... I can get one in 20 CV to make it just a little bit more corrosion resistant for fishing, which I do have one in 20 CV. But my main reasoning between the two as to whether I would take one or the other is the Pair 3 Lightweight. I do love it, but I just like I just like the standard Pair 3 more. And if I'm already going for kind of a lighter weight knife, I do like how the bug out is in terms of it is slimmer, right? So it's skinnier. The clip is stouter, so I can, you know, just in terms of its retention, it's stouter. So I can slide it in the the liner of my shorts or the the waist I can slide it onto the waistband of my shorts and it'll hold if I don't have any pockets. The pair three lightweight will do the same exact thing. I just really like how tight that clip is, so I'm not really paranoid about it. But because there is a you know a standard pair of three that isn't that much more expensive to where you get S45 in over S30V, which is nicer. And this starts with CTS uh BD1N, which isn't, you know. A horrendous steel but it's definitely a budget steel in terms of the working edge compared to something like s30v where you have that really toothy vanadium uh, because of the vanadium in it and so that's that's why i would take the bug out over the pair three also i like my knives to be ambidextrous you know and i do like that slightly extra bit of blade length but it just comes it in my opinion it comes down to a bunch of little things in terms of value, though, the Pair 3 Lightweight, I feel like, is a better value. And I do like Spyderco. I feel like they do do a better job on the heat treats. But I've carried Benchmade S30V before, and, and I have this one in S90V. And I just, I feel like there's just something about the bug out that makes me just like it a little bit more. And the fact being that if I really want, I can have a sturdier G10 version of this guy. Now, in terms of who I would recommend to someone, honestly, I'd recommend either of these. You know, they do make a mini bug out. for So for someone with smaller hands, the mini bug out, the access lock is a perfectly simple system to work. It is ambidextrous, so it works for people with both, you know, whether you're southpaw or you're right-handed, it, it works for you. And an another thing being is that the steel construction just goes a little bit further on the bug out. So even if someone's gonna be a little harder on it, uh, I've used both of these knives enough to know that even if you are a little harder on them, the they'll both be just fine. But Spyderco doesn't sell replacement blades and Benchmade does, right? So like if you snap your blade, Benchmade will be like, well, we can sharpen it back to like a nub for you or uh, you can buy another blade for it so it's really that warranty that would make it recommend that would make me recommend it more to people spider co customer service is great though i think if it came down to a standard pair of three in the bug out i'd probably take the standard pair of three but just because the plastic handles you know they are good on this guy but there's something about having that full liner in the g10 that just makes it feel better So ultimately, yes, I would take the bug out over the pair three lightweight. If you guys have an opinion or any questions on this video, like maybe tell me which one would you take? Would you take the pair three lightweight or would you take the bug out? I'd love to hear that. Shoot that down in the comments. If you guys like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you aren't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Hit that notification bell, that way you know when more videos like this get posted. And as always, guys, thank you so much for your time, and don't you forget to stay sharp.